Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. In today's clip, I'd like to review the Drone Max M10 from a company called Energen, which is a portable charging station that's been custom designed to allow you to recharge your Mavic Pro batteries several times in the field from a single charge of the unit. Now in the spirit of full disclosure, the company did send me this unit for review, but I promise you that won't impact my impressions of the product. You guys know I'm always very honest about the products I review, and I actually like to take these out into the field, put them through their paces for a couple of weeks to make sure they live up to the claims of the company. In the case of the M10, it absolutely did, and I'll get into why in a few minutes. But before I get into that, I thought I would do an overview of what comes with the kit, then I'll do a section on showing you exactly what the features are of the product and how to use it, and then finally I'll do a conclusion section where I'll give you some insight into my experiences with it over the last couple of weeks and try and answer some of the questions you guys have already sent me about this unit. So to get started, let's take a look at what comes with the kit. When you open up the box, you're going to see a beautiful carrying case inside, and everything you need to use this unit is inside that carrying case. I like that they spent a lot of time putting a carrying case in the unit. A lot of times you buy a product like this, it's in a box with a bunch of styrofoam, and you got a bunch of stuff that you got to put in your backpack. So having a case like this not only allows me to keep everything together, but it gives me another piece of protection when I'm taking it out in the field. Now the case itself has got plenty of room in the top for all the accessories you're going to put in there. You can put extra cables in there, other drone things you're taking with you, and the unit fits in the bottom. I always look for the little details in these things, and that shows you what a quality company you're dealing with. They could have just made this wide open, and it had the top part kind of flap down on top of it, but they built this additional protective flap in so that when you put the unit in the bottom and close the flap, it's totally protected from anything above it scratching the unit up. So nice little added touch there that they built in. So in addition to the case, you get the unit itself. Now the unit, and I'll go into more detail when I do the overview of this, but the unit's really built incredibly heavy duty. It's built out of extruded aluminum up top, so it's got aluminum top and bottom, which is really durable. It also helps to dissipate the heat when you're charging the unit or when you're using the unit to charge batteries. And it's got this really nice rubber bumper on the outside. If you drop it, the rubber bumper is going to buy, provide protection. The other thing I like is the rubber bumper actually keeps it up off the surface that you may be charging it on because this is going to get warm when you charge it. And if the aluminum was down on a table or something, that heat could damage the surface of the table. So having this unit up on the rubber really means that I've got air flow underneath it to keep it cool and I'm not going to have that heat directly on the surface I'm charging it. In addition to that you get a charger for the wall. A lot of times when you buy a product from a company you end up with a charger with a really short cord on it and that drives me nuts because if I'm charging this thing on my desk I don't want to have to deal with an extension cord coming to the desk. So they give you a charger with a nice long cable where you can have this on your desk, find a wall outlet and have plenty of cable to reach it. You get this unique cable here, which is the charging cable you'll use to charge both your Mavic batteries. It plugs into the front of the unit, and you can charge one battery at a time, or you can charge two batteries at a time. Obviously, if you charge one, it's going to charge a lot faster. I'll explain why in a little later in the clip. The other thing is this unit has tremendous amount of engineering built into it and a lot of smarts built into it, and I'll get into that in detail in the next section. But trust me when I tell you, if you charge it from this compared to charging it from the original charger, Surprising as it sounds, it'll actually charge your batteries faster from this than the original charger that came with the Mavic, and I'll explain why in the conclusion section. The last thing I want to talk about is the paperwork. I'm a big fan of paperwork. Here's an extended warranty card that explains what they cover for the product. There's a quick start guide, and if you're like me and want to rush through it and start using the unit, the quick start guide will get you going. If you want to understand more about the details of what the product can provide and all the feature sets that are built into it, there's a complete printed manual that you can read when you've got some time. Essentially, it's a very easy unit to use. You'll turn it on, you'll charge it. Once it's fully charged, you turn it off, take it with you in the field. If you need to charge your batteries, you turn it on again, connect up the, con the connector on the front of this, plug in one or two batteries to it, and just let them cook. And they're going to actually charge up pretty quickly. It's got all kinds of safeguards built into it for overcurrent, over thermal protection, any kind of spike protection, all the good stuff you need to make sure your Mavic batteries are going to be protected when you charge it. So essentially what you get when you open up the box is everything you're going to need to use the unit and charge your batteries out in the field. Now stay tuned and I'll show you how to use the unit. In this section, I'll cover the operation of the Drone Max M10, point out some of its key features, and explain how you can use it to charge your Mavic batteries out in the field. Before we get into that, though, let's take a closer look at the unit itself. When you pick it up, the first thing you'll notice is that it's incredibly well built. The whole exterior of this product is covered in aluminum. On the bottom, it's solid aluminum, both sides, the back and the top. The thing you'll notice if you look a little closer is there are small heat fins on the side. The bottom is solid aluminum, 
and the top has got some major heat fins. Now that's important because the aluminum itself helps to draw heat away from the inside of the unit where the batteries are housed and the sensitive electronics are housed. And remember, when you charge this or use it to charge your batteries, this is going to get warm. So having aluminum on the outside that will pull that heat away from the internal components is really an important feature. The second thing you'll notice is this really substantial rubber bumper on the outside. Now that serves a couple of different purposes. Number one, it's a great protection if you're going to drop this, and you'll probably drop it in the field. I've dropped it a few times. And having that rubber on the corners means no matter what I drop it in, it's going to bounce off it and not cause damage to the unit. The other thing it does is give you a really nice gripping surface, so you'll probably drop it less than if it was just the aluminum case itself. The third and more important feature that's a little more subtle is on the bottom of the unit, that rubber keeps it up off the surface you're charging it on. So if you're home and you've got this down on a really nice table and you're charging it, it's going to get warm. And having that little extra clearance where it's not flat against the table means you're not going to ruin a surface because of that heat being uh, broadcast down to that surface. It also gives it a little bit of air clearance underneath so it helps to dissipate that additional heat. If I look in the front of the unit, I've got a connection here where I actually charge it. I've got a second connection here which I use this dongle to charge the batteries. I've got a full-size USB connection on here that'll deliver 2.4 amps of current, and I've got a flashlight. That's a feature I haven't talked about yet, but these guys are clever enough where they've actually built a flashlight in here that has three different modes. It'll either be on, it'll strobe, or it'll move into SOS mode. So if you're out and people understand what SOS is, you can put it in SOS mode. Somebody sees it at a distance, they can come to your rescue. If I look at the top, there's a power button. It's not apparent, but there are four light bars around the outside of that, that when you turn this unit on, you'll see those four light bars light up, and each of those light bars represents 25% of the charge. Not a whole lot going on on the bottom. If I look at the back, they've actually taken the time to go through the approvals, uh, the electrical certifications and such for different countries. They printed instructions on here on how to use the unit, so if you forget how to use it, which is pretty straightforward to use it, but there's instructions in there on how to turn it on and how to use the unit. And again, the sides, there's not a lot going on there except for the rubber cushioning on the sides. Now to charge this unit, you're going to take it home, you're going to use the wall charger. Basically, you're going to plug it in the front, plug this thing in the wall, and let it charge. Now they recommend the initial charge be about four hours and I let it charge at least four hours, and when it's fully charged, it'll actually turn off. So that's a great thing to do the first time you're going to use it, because it helps condition the internal batteries to give them the longest possible life. Let me get this charger out of the way. Now to use the unit, you've got to turn it on first, and the way you do that is just like with the Mavic batteries, you'll tap it once, and then hold it for about three seconds. You'll see that light go out. Once that light goes out, it's going to go through a power cycle. It's doing some internal testing against the circuitry and the batteries that are inside there, and you'll see either four battery, or should say four LEDs light up, or some of those LEDs will light up. But again, each of these represents 25% of internal charge. So right now this thing is fully charged. If I want to charge those external batteries, I've got this dongle. Now, I can deliver up to six amps of current from this connector to the battery. So if I'm charging one of them, it'll charge it very quickly. If I charge two of them, I'm splitting that six amps between the two batteries, so it'll take a little bit longer to charge the two of them. But essentially what you're going to want to do is connect, turn this off first, and the way you turn it off again is tap it and hold it, and it turns off slowly. You want to connect these up to the Mavic batteries, and again, they're not positioned any different way. You can put them on either way, just like you can with the original charger. Once those are connected up to the batteries, you're going to connect this up to this connection on the front, and it's keyed so you can't put it in there wrong. It slides in nice and tight. Once those are connected up, you can turn this unit on, hold it for three seconds, quick tap and then hold it for three seconds. When it blinks out, it'll eventually come on. The minute it comes on, it's going to start charging those batteries. Now what's interesting about the charge is that it will try to charge both batteries simultaneously, but if this thing turns on, it's going to look at both those batteries, and if one of them is maybe 75% and the other one's 25%, instead of charging both batteries simultaneously, it'll actually charge the one that's lower a little bit more to catch up to the other battery and then charge them both the same. So it's a really smart charger in that it's going to look at the batteries and try to get them up to speed as quickly as possible. What I like to do out in the field is I typically charge one battery at a time, and I'll put up the quad, I'll fly through a battery, pull that battery out, set it aside, let it cool off. I'll take a fresh battery and fly the quad a little bit. Once that battery cools off, I'll put the single battery on here and charge it while I'm flying with another fresh battery. And again, if I carry three or four batteries with me, I find that I can actually continuously fly because this guy allows me to charge that. All right, so let me disconnect these guys real quick. Okay, it's turning off. All right, great. Let me get these guys disconnected. So you can see that it charges them up pretty straightforward. Not a lot of complications there. The last thing I want to talk about is this flashlight up front. Pretty cool product. So let me turn it on again.
All right, it's powering up. Now, if I want to use the flashlight, like I said before, there's three modes to it. Once this thing is powered up, if I hold tap the battery once, it turns on. I don't know if you can see that, but it's on. If I tap it again, it goes into strobe mode. Then if I tap it one more time, you guys that were Boy Scouts will notice that's SOS. And again, I don't know if you're ever going to use that. If you're out in a boat, maybe you're lost in the woods, you're okay. I think screaming is going to probably catch most people's attention. But again, it's an incredibly powerful flashlight. So if you're out in the woods, uh, packing up for the end of the day, maybe you've dropped something, you want to make sure you haven't dropped something, turn this thing on to the main setting and then using it as a flashlight is just a really nice added benefit to it. So those are the main features behind the unit. And again, I've used the thing for a couple of weeks and I've just been blown away by the durability of the product, its reliability. I've charged probably, I'd say 30 or 35 batteries on this and never had a lick of problems. It charges up really quickly. On a single battery that's almost totally drained, I can recharge it in less than 40 minutes. And if I'm flying this thing down to maybe one bar or two bars, I can charge it even quicker than that. So when I carry four batteries out in the field, again, I'll fly the Mavic through one of them, pull that battery out when I land it, let it sit for a minute, put a fresh one in, fly it, and then take that battery and put it on the charger. And having four batteries out in the field along with this guy allows me to rotate through those batteries and continuously fly that Mavic. So for my money, this product measures up to pretty much every expectation I had for it, and I won't leave home without it. In this last section, I wanted to discuss the technology behind the Drone Max M10, offer some of the observations that I've gained after having used the product for a couple of weeks, and really try to draw some conclusions around some of the claims the company makes about specifically being able to charge your Mavic batteries a couple of times off a single charge, and its ability to charge those Mavic batteries faster. And that's one thing that I got a ton of questions from you guys on, because initially, when you think about charging a LiPo battery, charging it faster is not always a good thing. That can damage a battery. Even though this battery is incredibly intelligent, a lot of people were worrying that if this thing tries to charge it too fast, I could actually be degrading the life of that Mavic Pro battery. So I thought, let me do a little bit of testing, but before I get into that, let's talk about the math behind this, right? So the first claim is that you can charge this battery several times off a full charge on the M10. So I'd look at that as an energy comparison between what the original battery can hold and what the M10 can provide. Then the second claim about being able to charge it 20% faster, has to do with its charging capability. So I'll do a charger comparison between the M10 and the original DJI Mavic Pro battery charger that comes with the unit. And when I do those side-by-side -side comparisons, I think you'll see that at least on the basic math, it does add up. And then I'll show you some of the comparisons I've done in actual testing. So to start with, let's do a comparison from the energy perspective. And really that has to do with the number of charges. So when I look at the M10, it's got an internal capacity of 99 watt hours. That's pretty substantial for a unit this size. They've really packed a lot of energy inside this portable charging bank. When I compare that to the Mavic Pro battery, the Mavic Pro battery has an energy capacity of 43.6 watt hours. So if I round that up to 44, that means I've got 88 watt hours that I need to be able to charge this thing twice, and I've got 99 inside here. Now to be fair, none of us run these batteries all the way down to zero. So we're probably gonna land the Mavic at 15 or 20% worth of its capacity left, maybe even 30% of its capacity left. So if I did drain this battery completely down to zero, I would have more than enough power inside this Drone Max M10 to charge that battery twice. My experience in the field, and again, I probably run it down to 30 or 25%, is that I've gotten at least three full charges out of this unit on batteries that are connected to it. And in some cases, I've gotten four, depending on, again, how much I've used of it. So from the claim that it'll at least charge your batteries twice, absolutely true. I've seen that to be the case out in the field under real use conditions. The second consideration I have is how fast can it charge it? So when I look at the ability of this to charge your batteries faster, when I compare the Drone Max M10, it's got the same voltage capacity available. So it's 13.05 volts, which is exactly what you need to charge the Mavic batteries and it's got a charging capacity of six amps for a single battery. Now, if you're charging two batteries, obviously that's split in half and you'll get three amps for each battery. But when I look at the original Mavic charger, again, I can only use that as a single charger. Even if I use one of the battery hubs, it's gonna charge a single battery at a time and rotate through that hub. What I find is that that's got an output capacity of 3.83 amps, which means the Drone Max has more than twice or almost twice the charging capacity of the original DJI charger. Now you would think, is that a good thing, right? Because if I'm pushing too much current at a battery too quickly, can I cook that battery? And in a lot of cases you can. The beauty here is that the battery will actually take a charge at a higher current than the charger will put out. And it's a, it's a clean charge because it's DC to DC. 
well, why wouldn't they build a bigger charger? If I could charge these batteries faster, the simple question I'd have as an engineer is, why wouldn't I build a bigger charger? Why wouldn't I give you a wall charger that could charge at a full six amps? The honest answer is they could build that. The reason they don't build that is number one cost. The bigger charger is gonna cost them more, which pulls profit out of the sale of the product. But more importantly, a bigger charger, capacity-wise, is gonna mean a bigger charger physically. And there's a certain tipping point when you're designing a product like this to where it's considered portable and not portable, right? So if I built this thing to be twice as large from a capacity perspective, it might be physically almost twice as large. And then you've got this gigantic brick for charging your Mavic Pro batteries that most people are gonna complain is way too big. So settling on this particular size and the current they provide allows you a reasonable charge time for your Mavic Pro batteries, even though these batteries could handle a charge at a higher current. The reason this can charge it 20% faster is because it delivers six full amps of current at that particular voltage to charge those batteries. So from my expectations, it does charge it a lot faster. And all the testing I've done, and I've done it at 15% of a battery to full charge, 20% full charge, 50% to full charge, the best I've ever gotten as far as speed goes is 38% faster. So comparing this to this, when I'm charging a battery at any given rate, the best I've gotten is 38%. The worst I've gotten is about 26%. So they claim 20% faster. I've not seen it that slow. I've seen it 26 to 38%. So for my money, this not only charges it multiple times, which is one of the claims they make, but it also charges it faster without damaging the battery. And again, I explain why that's the case. So from those two claims, 100% uh, guarantee that it's gonna do what they say it's gonna do. The other thing to point out, which is important, is the USB connection on the front here is a full 2.4 amps of current. Now, the reason that's important is because if you're charging a large tablet or your phone or your controller or any really USB device out there that's thirsty for those kind of electrons, having the ability to supply 2.4 amps versus the two amps that are available as these auxiliary connections on the end means that this is gonna charge any external device slower than this guy will. So again, the benefits are it will charge your batteries multiple times, it'll charge them faster, it'll also charge any external device faster. So from all the claims that they make, it does everything they say and then some. And my experience has been very positive with this. I've used it for a couple of weeks. I've charged probably 30 batteries on it, never had a single problem with it. The unit itself charges up in about four hours. And on average, it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to charge a single battery. And the way I use it out in the field is I bring it with me on a full charge. I'll fly through a Mavic battery. When I swap that out with a fresh battery, I'll let that other battery that I just flew with cool down a little bit, put it on the charger and let it charge while I'm flying through that second battery. In most cases, if I take three batteries, I can actually rotate through those three batteries through a charging cycle, a cool down cycle, and a flying cycle, and always have a battery ready to go when I'm ready to fly. So pretty cool product. So that's pretty much it for this clip. Uh, if you have any questions about anything I've covered, and I know there was a lot of material there, please drop them in the comments below, and I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I love this charger, and I'm gonna take this portable charging station with me every time I go out in the field. It seems like it's a large unit. It really isn't when you get it in your hands. It's hard to really understand how physically uh, easy it is to carry this along with you. Again, they built this thing to be incredibly durable, and it's something that up until now, I really haven't had a solution to charge those Maverick batteries out in the field unless I was near my car. This gives me the ability to drop it in a backpack, take it with me on those long hikes where I'm near no electrical outlets whatsoever, and recharge my batteries a couple of times in the field. One other thing I wanted to cover before I end the clip, a lot of people asked me, well, geez, Rick, why would I spend the money on this when I could just buy extra batteries? And that's a pretty decent argument. I mean, these batteries are not cheap. They're about 90 bucks a pop. Two of these batteries is way more expensive than one of these units. And what I like about this unit is that it not only allows me to charge the batteries I've got, but it also gives me the ability to charge other external devices when I'm out in the field. So for me, it's less expensive. It'll charge my batteries on the fly. If I trade my Mavic out for something else, I may be able to use this with future devices, depending on you know cables and connections and things like that. But for me, that argument of buying two extra batteries or buying the unit, it's a no-brainer. I'd rather buy the unit. So that's just my personal preference. But again, that's pretty much it for today. So if you have any questions at all, drop them below. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can. I like putting these clips together, as I say every time. So as long as you guys are finding value, I'll keep producing the clips. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down the bottom. And until next time, happy flying. Thank you.